We'll see you all in a bit. I'm going to hand it off to Lori. Lamb's quarters is, is like, it grows everywhere. So I'm so excited to learn different ways that we can utilize it. Because why not use what's in an abundance, right? It really does. It does grow everywhere. And I see people from Canada and New Zealand and South America and all over North America. So this is really exciting. And um, I'm just excited to share this with you because I've had an overabundant <laughs> crop of lamb quarters this year. So I've um, researched all sorts of ways to use it, ways to preserve it, um, both yummy food ways and medicinal ways. So I'm excited to share this with you. So let me, you're ready for me to screen share. Here we go. I don't need to share sound. All right. So as Tara was saying, this is really a bonus class for my current students who are in the herbal medicine making course through the Matthew Wood Institute. But I did want to share it free with all of you, at least for about a week. But those of you who are in the full course, you'll get this for forever. Um, so I'm excited to share it with all of you. And so this webinar today is about lamb's quarters. We're going to spend some time getting to know the plant and then talk about how the plant can be used both nutritionally and medicinally. Okay, so lamb's quarters is called chinopodium album, and it literally means goose foot and album means white. So let me see. I harvested a while ago, so the white part is kind of like dulled on them, but I can at least show you the shape of a goose foot. Here you go. Well, it might be just better on the picture. It's kind of shaped like a little goose foot, and around the back, there's this gray white film. And that's what this is right here. See the gray white film? And that's a natural part of the plant. You don't have to scrape it off. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but it is a great identifying characteristic of lamb's quarters. If you want to know if something with the shape of a goose foot is lamb's quarters, turn it around, rub it, and see if that white stuff comes off. Um, these are the lamb's quarter flowers. They're teeny, teeny, tiny. You can't see them. Um, and then once the flowers make seed, let's see if y'all be able to see this too. There you go. See those little black seeds? You see them? Here's those are the seeds of lamb's quarters and you can spread them all over the place if you dare. <laughs> and I say if you dare because this is my tamed crop of lamb's quarters right now. My entire yard would look like this if I didn't pull it up and tend it. So I decided to just give this entire bed to lamb's quarters because lamb's quarter is in the spinach plant family and it's just as if not more nutritious as its spinach cousin. It's also in the quinoa family. So those black seeds I just showed you um, are also edible. They're full of protein. They can be ground up and eaten as a protein source, much like quinoa. So it's in a very popular plant family nutritionally, and it has just as many uses. So that's super exciting. I'm just going to bring up the chat. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure none of y'all have questions as I go, which is totally fine. I may or may not notice them, and I'm I can go back and forth between talking in the chat. So just let me know if you have questions. Um, so some other identifying characteristics of lamb's quarters. Here are lamb's quarters sprouts coming just up out of the bed. They have the exact same little goose foot shape and the white stuff on the back of the leaves. You'll also sometimes see magenta streaks going up and down the stems and at the notches of where the um, stems meet. And I bet I have a great example of that. Of course, the one I grab. Here we go. Let's see how close I have to get to show you the magenta. That one's not going to work, but that's okay. Oh, Tara's at work here. Oh, see it? See it right there? The little magenta in the notch. Oh, and here's one down here. 
There we go. So those are some identifying characteristics of lambs quarters. Why do you want to identify lambs quarters? Because you want to eat them. Um, so something we do in the medicine making course over and over and over and over and over is we talk about the taste of a plant and we teach you how to use the taste of a plant to at least guess at or have some ideas about two things. One, what the plant can do for you medicinally, and two, how to extract those medicines from the plant in the most powerful way possible to maximize the medicine you're getting out of a plant. A third thing you can tell about a plant is its energetics, and that's just a fancy way of saying um, how it's going to impact your body. So energetics are things like, is it heating? Is it cooling? Is it drying? Is it moistening? Is it relaxing or is it stimulating? Those are energetics. Um, so if you take a bite out of lamb's quarters, you will notice that it tastes salty. And I put salty in quotation marks because the salty taste or flavor profile in herbs doesn't really mean it tastes like sodium chloride. Like another example of something in the salty category are um, seaweeds. They taste salty, right? They're floating around in salt. <laughs> but other things in that category are things like nettles and oat straw and chickweed and even purslane would be in that category. They do not taste like sodium chloride, but they're salty. And so a way I like to explain that um, that connects a little more mentally is they taste earthen or grassy. And so the salty or earthen taste will tell you that it's a nutrient dense plant. Another thing you'll notice about lamb quarters when you taste it is it's astringent on your tongue. So it's like you can taste, you can feel your pores like tightening up and your mouth drying up. That's astringency. As opposed to a few weeks ago, we talked about purslane, which was also in the salty plant family, and it was a nutritive plant, but it's super duper moistening. It's full of mucilaginous demulcent moisture. And so whereas purslane is moistening and would be useful for dry conditions to moisten them up, lamb's quarters is astringent and drying and so would be more useful for damp lax conditions that need to be dried and tightened up. And that's a, a spoiler for stuff we're going to talk about in a little bit as far as the medicinal um, properties of lamb's quarters. Another thing you'll notice, especially in the more mature leaves, are there's, um, there's a little bit of bitterness um, that comes along with that salty flavor profile. So what does all that mean? Um, so the earthen flavor, like I said, that's an indication that it's high in nutrients. Astringency is drying, tightening and toning. Usually it's cooling, but that bitter flavor profile is usually also cooling and drying. So it's a very drying kind of property plant. So just keep that in mind as we get deeper into this discussion. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the specific constituents that are in lamb's quarters that give it these taste profiles, right? Why is it salty? Why is it astringent? Why is it bitter? What's in it that makes it so? Um, so again, the earthen flavor profile is indicative of nutritive constituents and lamb's quarters is full of them. Like I said, lamb's quarters may even be more nutrient dense than its cousin spinach. Um, so it has vitamins, minerals, the seeds are full of protein, the leaves are full of protein. And so you can use lamb's quarters leaves in any recipe that you would use spinach in, right? So you can eat it raw, you can eat it steamed, boiled, cooked, whatever you wanna do with the leaves, you can do it. That astringency may bother some people to eat raw. And if it does, there's nothing wrong with it. Just steam it or cook it, right? Or saute it. And then you won't get that astringency as much. Some other constituents in lamb's quarters are saponins and alkaloids. And these impart the bitter flavor profiles or in the 
um, astringent flavor profile to the plant because those constituents tend to be more medicinal as opposed to nutritional. So let's talk about those for just a minute. Saponins have been very well researched and in general, as a constituent family, they are anti-inflammatory. And so lamb's quarters have an anti-inflammatory property. But there have also been studies on saponins in different plants, and a lot of them have been shown to have anti-cancer properties. And lamb's quarters has been studied in an in vitro study. So cells taken out of humans, grown in petri dishes, exposed to lamb's quarters. Um, and they actually saw a reduction in both estrogen-caused and non-estrogen-caused breast cancer. So that's super cool, right? So it's, you know, preliminary, not a ton of studies doing that. There's one study that has done that, um, but it does give an indication of what these saponins and lambs quarters have the potential to do for us as plant allies. And then alkaloids are going to give the plant that bitter taste and the alkaloid family, there are zillions of different alkaloids in plants. Some of them are deadly. Some of them are slightly medicinal and then everything in between. And the alkal and it's just going to depend on the plant, right? <laughs> so you just have to learn about alkaloids. Um, but the alkaloids in lamb's quarters have been used for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and they're used as an antiparasitic. So that's super cool. And we'll talk a little bit more about other digestive medicinal properties of lamb's quarters as a medicine. So as far as lamb's quarter medicine and due to all of its constituents, both the nutritional and medicinal constituents, um, you have immune support, digestive support. So just a little teaser there, the alkaloids are antiparasitic. And those saponins are anti-inflammatory for digestive inflammation, but astringent plants are used to tighten and tone lax tissues, which if you're experiencing diarrhea, you've got some digestive laxity. So it can be taken internally to astringe that laxity, but it can also be used externally to astringe like weeping wounds, bites and scrapes. Um, there were even... Um, native cultures that used it as snake venom medicine because it astringes and sucks that venom out of your body. Now, please do not skip on going to the hospital now if you get a snake bite. <laughs> they didn't have that option back then. Um, but that is what that astringent quality of this plant can do. And the anti-inflammatory makes it particularly useful for like itchy bites and stings. And I just, I keep bringing up purslane because I want to contrast it because purslane was also used externally, but purslane was moistening. So it was for dry external conditions that you want to moisten up as an external medicine. But because lamb's quarters is astringent and drying, you use it externally on wet, weeping, lax conditions to dry them up and tighten and tone those tissues. So two nutritive plants with different energetics. And so they're used differently in and on the body. Are there any questions at this point? Because I've covered a lot kind of fast. Um, so I just want to make sure we're still having fun and not confused. <laughs> and we're about to shift gears here. So it was a good time to pause. All right. Any questions here? Take if not, that's fine. Annabelle says, perfect pace. All right. Nothing yet, so. Okay, sounds good. Um, so again, I just want to reiterate that in the full herbal medicine making course, we go through each of these tastes individually. I teach you how to taste them, experience them. And I teach you how to pair up those tastes with the constituents that impart those tastes to the plant. 
And then with the energetics and the uses that those tastes impart to the plant. And so I'm kind of speeding through them in this webinar, um, but it's more because I know people in the course have gone through the thorough um, education on that. And so can you. All right, so now what we're going to do is learn how to make medicine with lamb's quarters. And again, those tastes tell you the constituents and the constituents tell you how to make medicine with the plant. Now, first and foremost, you can just eat it, right? You can eat the limbs. Um, you can eat the stems. You can eat the leaves. You can eat the seeds and grind them up. The whole thing is medicinal. Now, you don't, I mean, edible. So, these really, I'll stop share. Look at that. Right ahead of you, Tara. Yeah. So once the stems get big, these are like, I can't even bend it. Right. So they are edible, but you don't want to eat them because <laughs> you can't. Um, but if you could bend it, you know, the younger stems, these are perfectly edible. So the idea is to get it to harvest it as close to the ends of the stems as possible just so they're bendy and not so fibrous that you can't chew them. There's nothing wrong with any part of the plant though. So you can eat the whole thing. So what I wanted to do, so you can get on the internet and find all kinds of lamb's quarters recipes. Um, but I wanted to do something unique like purslane pesto is super popular. And in the purslane webinar, which is now in the herbal medicine making course, instead, I made a purslane chimichurri because I'd never seen that. And I was and I love chimichurri. Um, so I wanted to do something unique like that for lamb's quarters. You know, it's very common to see lamb's quarters frittata or lamb's quarters omelet or lamb's quarters pancakes, like a savory pancake. Um, but I found like a lamb's quarters tzatziki sauce. And so this is Greek yogurt and I blended it up with the lamb's quarters. And then I added toasted garlic and cumin that I toasted in olive oil and just kind of stirred it up. And then these are Turk's cat flowers that are blooming right now in Texas, attracting all the hummingbirds. And then I just sprinkled some chives on top. Um, and it was so scrumptious. And now I'm going to eat all my lamb's quarters this way. Like it was so good. Um, so you can get really creative with your wild edibles. And um, I think the website I got that from was called Forager Chef. But again, the internet is very creative with, uh, with wild crafted foods. Okay, let's see this question. Oh, absolutely. So a comment. So the question is, can you use this for your livestock? Right. And the answer is yes. A common name of this plant is pigweed. Now there's a quinoa plant that's also called pigweed. So I just call this lamb's quarters. I just, I don't ever use any other common name. Um, people call it wild spinach as well. Um, but pigweed originated, they think, because it's so nutrient dense that it can be used as a fodder plant because a lot of people just think of it as a weed. So you just cut it at the base and give it to your chickens or your goats or your horses. Um, so once I've harvested all that I can from my lamb's quarters or I'm just done with it because it's everywhere, that's what I'll do. I'll cut it at the base and I'll go feed it to my chickens. And the cool thing is those seeds are all over this plant. And so the seeds should also spread wherever you feed it to your animals. Um, and hopefully pop up as sprouts that they can eat. Oh yeah. So like spinach pie, I've seen spinach dip, wild spinach dip, right? Any of those things you can do um, with spinach, you can do with lamb's quarters. So super exciting. And don't forget food is medicine, right? And so that's why I include this food in the medicine part of the webinar. Which, just as a little teaser, Phyllis Light and I are right now working on a food as medicine whole course for the Matthew Wood Institute, which we should get that rolling in a month or so. So that's exciting. Sorry, that's how my brain works. I hear a word like, boop, 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 boop. okay. 
<laughs> All right, here we go. Back to Lamb's Quarters medicine. So what is the best way to make medicine with Lamb's Quarters knowing what we know about it, right? We know it has vitamins and minerals. We know it has saponins and we know it has alkaloids. Well, in the course, we teach all of this in detail, but just as a little tidbit for y'all, vitamins and minerals are best extracted by water. However, the problem with water is you can't preserve it, right? So I can make endless mineral and vitamin rich teas while the plant is growing, but you can't preserve water-based medicine, but vinegar you can preserve. So you can use vinegar to extract the vitamins and minerals from lamb's quarters. The con of that is you can't ingest as much vinegar as you can water, right? But you can still use vinegar in salad dressings um, and other in drinks, all sorts of ways you, and even as medicine, right? You can make oxymel vinegar medicines and now it's nutrient dense salad dressing or drink mix or oxymels, right? So might as well get those nutrients extracted the best way possible. Um, Someone is asking if you dehydrated the leaves, would you lose some of those nutrients? So another way you can preserve this is to powder the leaves, right? To dry them and then powder them up. The only nutrient, I mean, the answer is yes. You always lose some nutrients through any kind of processing and it just depends on the nutrient. Some nutrients are destroyed by heat. Some are destroyed by air. Some are destroyed by light. So you lose all of those, but you also maintain all of the ones that you wouldn't have had, had you just given it to your chickens, right? So there's still a lot of nutrients in those powders. Minerals are not lost through dehydration. So you're still going to get those minerals if nothing else, and you are getting other things. So um, that's another great way to preserve this plant. Um, So saponins are extracted by alcohol and by water and alkaloids are extracted by alcohol and by water. So again, as long as lamb's quarters is in your yard, you can be making teas with it and get those anti-inflammatory properties, those astringent properties, even those anti-parasitic properties, if you want, that are found in the saponins and alkaloids. But if you wanted to preserve it to use during this season where lamb's quarters isn't growing, then um, you can extract those things with alcohol. So let's do some of those things. Um, So I already sort of teased at this, but you can use lamb's quarters externally. And the way you would do that is strip the leaves off the plant and then just grind them up with a mortar and pestle and put them on your body. You will see people teach to put plants in your mouth and chew them up into a poultice and put it externally on your body. I don't recommend that because it's a great way to spread pathogens Um, because you have pathogens in your mouth. They're just there and you don't usually go around licking your wounds. And so it's just another way to introduce an infection into an open place externally, but you can grind them up, cut them up with scissors, cut, grind them up with a mortar and pestle. Let's do it. And then rub it on your body. Right? So what I learned from the purse lane webinar is not to put a poultice on my body at the beginning of a webinar. So I'm going to save that one for the end if we have time, (laughs) but that's a way you can use it externally and you can freeze those poultices. Okay. So you can grind them up and then put them in Ziploc bags or put them in any kind of bag you want and freeze them. You could also put it in ice cube trays and freeze them and take them out and let it thaw and use it as a poultice. So just some ways to preserve the lamb's quarters medicine. Yeah, they say that. So someone said she's heard that about plantain to chew in the mouth for a bee sting. I just, I, I recommend against the chewing thing, but you know, people been doing it. So (laughs) all right. So the next medicine we talked about was an herbal vinegar. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. 
Um, oh, I'm going to quit sharing so you can kind of see me. One thing I want to do at this point is talk about a difference of Tara and I's herbal medicine making course with other herbal medicine making courses. And the reason why I'm prefacing that is because it's about to happen. Um, we intentionally wanted to create a course where we didn't hide herbal medicine making mistakes. We didn't hide things that can go wrong. We didn't hide the messes because we wanted everyone in our course to know how to troubleshoot those things when they happened. And we love the beautiful, perfect herbal medicine making courses that are out there. They're awesome as well, but we wanted something different so people would know, oh, if this doesn't go exactly how the book says it's going to go or the course says it's going to go, what do I do, right? Or how do I clean up the messes or how do I do this or that? And so the reason why I'm telling you that is because they tell you to harvest lamb's quarters before it starts seeding and going to flower. And that's because if it wasn't seeding and going to flower, I could just strip these stems and get the leaves off, right? But now every single stem has seeds at the end of it, not just on the main stem, but look, every single leaflet has flowers <laughs> at the end of it. So unless I want my lamb's quarter food to be full of these seeds, which would be fine, but some people may not want the grittiness, right? It's all totally edible, but some people just may not want the seeds in their vinegar or their tincture or their food. Um, so what you can do if that's you, and that's actually why I brought this basket. I'll back up. There we go. If that's you, it just is going to take a little more processing. So you can go to the end of each stem and cut off the seeds. Because remember, the seeds are edible too. So I can give these to my animals or I can collect these seeds and powder them, grind them down and eat them. So I'm going to cut them off of the end of each stem, but then I have to go to the end of each little stem too, right? Each little stem and cut off the seeds. All right. All right. That's what I would do if I cared that those seeds were in my vinegar or my food. So now the seeds are gone, right? And so now there's one I missed, but that's okay. Now I can just strip it and I get the leaves off. What does that have to do with making an herbal vinegar? Well, to make an herbal vinegar with fresh plant, all you need is a mason jar and you want a plastic lid because metal lids will corrode and you will fill the jar. So I would fill this jar all the way up, which now I'm just going to strip some of these leaves while I'm talking. I'm putting seeds in here because I don't care. <laughs> and I just want to say that I, um, I just want to show y'all what this looks like and like how long it takes because it's going to take a while to strip this plant and fill up this jar. And you can't see me doing it, but I want you to see me doing it. Now, how cute is that? My jar is sitting in the middle of lamb's quarters, getting full of lamb's quarters. So if you're making a vinegar with fresh plant, you fill it all the way to the top with fresh plant, and then you just fill the jar with vinegar and you let it sit for two to six weeks. Then you'll strain it. You strain the solids out of it and you keep the vinegar and it's shelf stable or you can store it in the fridge if you want to. If you had dried plant, so you can make herbal vinegars with any plant that has constituents that vinegar will extract, right? So if you had dried plant, including dried lamb's quarters, you would fill the jar up halfway instead of all the way. How do you use up your, your vinegars? Do what? How do you like to use your vinegars? How do I like to use my vinegars? Okay, so I use them three main ways. One, you can make like really medicinal vinegars with yucky tasting herbs like elecampane vinegar. That's a stimulating expectorant for like congested coughs. 
And so making it into a vinegar can make it easier to just take as a medicine, right? So like just as a medicine. But another thing I like to do with vinegars is add honey to them. And that's called an oxymel. And then you can use that either just as medicine or you can mix it with olive oil or savory herbs and make a salad dressing. Or I also have a soda stream that I create bubbly water with. And I pour my vinegars into that as well, either with or without honey. Um, and so I make flavored bubbly water that's nutrient dense and medicinal instead of full of preservatives and yucky stuff like bubbly water from the store. So if it's fresh plant, you fill the jar all the way up, cover it with vinegar, let it sit. If it's dry plant, you fill the jar up halfway up with the plant and then again, fill the jar up with the vinegar and let it sit. And then after four to six weeks, you strain it and it's shelf stable. So since I sense that the questions are done here, I'm just going to show you that amount of work and it's really just halfway full. And what you want to do at this point, you don't want to leave it in big pieces like this. You want to chop it up. The smaller the pieces, the more medicine is going to be extracted. And you're going to see why I said it's really only halfway full, even though it looks like three quarters of the way full. Once you chop it up, this may only be about a quarter full. Right? So I would do that. There we go. I would do that and then just keep adding it until it's all the way full since it's this fresh plant. We're going to put on our pretend pants and pretend that it's full. <laughs> So imagine this is a full jar of fresh lamb's quarters. Or we can imagine this is dried lamb's quarters. Either way, you want to pretend. So then you just fill it up. I get this question a lot. You do not want to use white distilled vinegar for this. You're ingesting this. You do not want to ingest distilled vinegar. So this is apple cider vinegar. Um, you can use any ingestible vinegar, depending on if you're using this as medicine or for salad dressing that you want flavors with. Um, and then you want to press that plant material down under the vinegar. You don't want anything not, you don't want anything that's exposed because something that's exposed to air will get mold and go bad. So you put your plastic lid on because Metal lid will corrode with vinegar. Shake it. And there you go. There's an herbal vinegar, and you can use it in two to six weeks. Seeds, would you dry them first before grinding? Yes. So what I would do after I collected all these seeds is I would let them dry, and then I will take them. Here we go. I will take them and put like a piece of paper under me and I'll do like this because all the black seeds are going to come out of it. Like there's seeds all over now since, cause I've been cutting this plant. So I do like this to get the seeds out. Look at my hands covered in seeds. And then I would throw the rest of this either to the compost or to the animals. Any other questions? Why don't you ingest distilled white vinegar? It's like, it's too harsh of a vinegar for ingestion. It's too vinegary. <laughs> if vinegary it. wasn't vinegary enough, you know? Can you, um, use, can you use pickling vinegar? What vinegar are you pickling with? I think that's distilled white vinegar, right? Unless you're pickling with apple cider vinegar. And the apple cider vinegar just tastes better. Yeah, and it's got it's got its own medicinal properties. Its own nutritive properties. If you're pickling with the vinegar and then ingesting it, yeah, I would, I would think that's fine. 
I've never done that and I don't know and I've never asked that, but I would guess that it's fine. Some white vinegar is made from wood. Sounds like a whole art in and of itself. Oh, totally. And you can make your own apple cider vinegar too, which is super fun. Okay, so that's vinegars. Then you can also make tinctures. A tincture is an alcohol extract of a constituent. And so we said the saponins are extracted by alcohol and the alkaloids are extracted by alcohol. So I'm just going to back up one sec. So remember, the vinegar is going to have the vitamins and minerals. The alcohol is going to have the anti-inflammatory, potentially anti-cancer, the anti-parasitic, the astringent properties of this plant. So the vinegar extraction is going to be a totally different medicine than the alcohol extraction, right? Because you're extracting different things from the plant. So you would do exactly the same thing. You would, since it's a fresh plant, fill this jar all the way up with fresh plants and then cover it with alcohol, put the lid on, shake it and let it sit two to six weeks and then strain it. If it were a dried plant, you can fill it up halfway with the plant, cover it with alcohol, shake it and then strain it. And that's an alcohol tincture. But those two medicines are two totally different medicines because the alcohol extracts something different than the vinegar did. Um, so keep that in mind. A lot of people want to know what kind of alcohol to use. Um, I would use whatever alcohol you can get organically if you can. Um, sometimes I can get organic vodka. And so that's what I get. You can't get organic ethanol here, which ethanol has higher alcohol content. Um, so I use organic vodka. Um, if you can get organic ethanol, you can play around with the water to alcohol content a little better. But if you use organic vodka, you really don't want to dilute this anymore um, in order for your tincture to be shelf stable. So just keep that in mind because this is like half water, half alcohol. And so once you have a fresh plant, adding more water dilution to this alcohol and you strain it, you don't want to dilute this anymore. Um, if you can't get organic alcohol, that's fine. Um, people often ask if you can use flavored alcohols. You're not going to extract as much medicine from the herb if you use flavored alcohols as the extractor because that alcohol already has particulates in it, right? So it's not going to extract as many particulates from the plant. So you want to get, oh, yo, my floor is covered in seeds. <laughs> um, you're not going to get as much medicine out of the plant if you use a flavored alcohol. What you could do is extract the medicine from the plant with an alcohol that's yucky, strain it, and then add things like honey or other flavors and then turn it into a yummy tincture if you want to. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, wine vinegars. How can you keep it preserved when using tea infusion with an alcohol tincture? So that's a double extraction and we learn how to do that. We have a whole lesson on that in the course, the herbal medicine making course. Um, but in general, you just want to make sure that you have over 26% alcohol in the final product. That way it preserves, right? And essentially what you would do is you would make a tea, you would make a tincture with the same plant, and then you combine them. And you want to make sure the final product is 26% alcohol or more in order to be shelf stable. Mm. Do you get bubbles? Do I get bubbles from what? I think it was related back to when we were talking about vinegars, different kinds of vinegar. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder which part of the vinegar these concepts are. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so in the herbal medicine making course, there's a whole vinegar lesson. There's a whole tincture method. 
lesson. There's a whole double extraction method lesson. And then also, so there's beginner vinegar, beginner tincture, beginner water extraction. And then once you get through the beginner concepts, then you move up in complexity and you get intermediate tinctures like the ratio method tincture or double extractions. And then you even move up to advanced complexity where we do percolation tinctures and all kinds of crazy herbal medicine making combo techniques. And the cool thing about the course is if you're already past the beginner level, just like with your previous studies, you can skip that and go to the intermediate or advanced. Mm -hmm. Okay. So (laughs) I took the lamb's quarter leaf and I chopped it up with scissors first. And then I use a mortar and pestle and glopped it all up. I'm trying to get like, ah, there we go. See how it's like a paste now. And so I let a mosquito bite me right before this webinar so I would be itchy. I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. But that's the kind of commitment I have, people. I would have done that. Um, And so you would just take this poultice, apply it to a wound, and you can wrap it there. Um, You can hold it there. But this would be anti-inflammatory. This would be astringent, used for weepy, itchy, conditions that need drying, tightening, toning, and anti-inflaming. Wonderful. And that's why you don't do it at the beginning of the webinar. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to see me do it at the beginning of a webinar, sign up for the course and start with the purse lane one. (laughs) (laughs) Feeds on your floor. Uh, Oh yeah. If you want to make um, some lamb's quarter seed, food i've got the floor for you (laughs) all right any last questions before we wrap it up and seriously each class is not too serious it's way fun we have a lot of fun but we do like if people have serious questions we dive into them right like Mm -hmm. um what to do if you know you're going to be triggered by alcohol. And so you don't want to take tinctures, but alcohol is the best way to extract a medicine. We get into that. Um, so we can be serious, but we're mostly funny and we just love teaching you how to make medicine. So I hope you join us. If not in the course, we will have some more of these webinars in the future. So make sure and pay attention to your email um, to get notified of the next ones. Well, and that reminds me, the topic of our next one is lemongrass. Oh my gosh, Dawn just asked a really important question. Okay, so (laughs) thank you for reminding me to go to my last slide. Um, So Lamb's Quarters does have oxalic acid in it. So many plants have oxalic acid, so it's debatable of whether we should be freaking out over it or not. But if your doctor has told you to avoid oxalic acid, then you don't want to eat lamb's quarters all day, every day. Right. There's also been some super weird bio individual reactions to eating lots of lamb's quarter leaves where they get photosensitive, like they get um, reactions to the sun. And they'll even get edema and all kinds of other weird things. And it's because lamb's quarters has curamins in it. And so if that happens to be you, stop eating the lamb's quarters so much and give me all of your lamb's quarters to Ziki. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah, thank you, Deb, for that question. That's important. Uh, I've heard that oxalic acid can be reduced or ameliorated by cooking. Yes. Like spinach and spinach and kale also. Yeah, just don't eat it raw. Great. All oh, right. it was Dawn who did that. I called you Deb, but now I know your name is Dawn. Sorry about that. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you all so much. What a wonderful Wednesday. And if people missed it, again, there's like a week where they can watch the recording. So let them know. And here with your friends. Next time. The next class is going to be lemongrass. So mine has already gone kaput. But for those of you who already have still have lemongrass hanging around, it's so worth preserving. I'm so glad I I 
preserved. And I'm so excited to learn more uses for this. So lemongrass is the next class, free class on October 26th at noon central. And we'll send you information on that as well. Yeah. Lemongrass is so yummy. Yay. Yeah. So that's just two weeks away. So that's exciting. Yep, coming up soon. So uh, make sure to sign up when you see that and please share with your friends. We really appreciate it. All we, we, we like having an herby community. That's yeah. my gesture of like hugging. Medicine making is more fun with friends. Absolutely. That is for sure. Thanks, Lori. Thank you all for being here. We're so glad to have you. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you are interested in learning more, you can visit our website at matthewwoodinstituteofherbalism.com. You can find all of our social links in the description below. Also, please subscribe to our channel so you can keep up with the latest videos.